I have these two friends, and they are perfect for each other. My one friend, she's so authentic, has a way of connecting with people deeply. My other friend is one of the smartest guys I know, and he's always helping other people. I found out that they actually knew each other in the past. He said he just wasn't sure if she was ready to take things to the next level. But he doesn't know that she has really changed lately. I couldn't help but notice that the timing was perfect for them. I actually came across their dating profiles and found out that they're indeed a great match with a high percentage of compatibility. Here's my one friend's profile. Her current interests include graphic and game design, virtual and augmented reality, 3D illustration and animation. Her real name? Art. Here's my other friend's profile. His current interests include medicine, research, anatomy, and physiology. You might be able to guess his real name, science. They look so different, how could they be a good match? Could it simply be their differences that make them a good match? I mean, is it too simple to suggest that sometimes science is hard to understand and that art can use more of a role in helping people learn? I like what Michelle Goji says about this. She says that art and science are partners in the human journey. And like partners in a good marriage or successful business, they often have separate projects. But they collaborate when it serves them because their relationship is intimate and nourishing. And without the participation of them both, the journey is not as successful, nor interesting, nor as deep. Now, of course we know this isn't a new idea. But I believe that the role of art is changing in our society due to new technologies and that the convergence of science and art can be more powerful today than ever before in education. As a kid growing up in the 80s, I was inspired by the weirdest things. When you think of your childhood, what inspired you? What images come to mind? Maybe for some of you, it's Neil Armstrong standing on the moon. Maybe for others, it's Michael Jordan flying across the basketball court. Anyone else spend a little bit too much time thinking about Casio keyboard sound effects, garbage pail kids, or Trapper Keeper cover art? <laughs> Somehow these strange art forms inspired me to be creative. And being creative and making the weirdest things possible was all I wanted to do when I grew up. As a teenager, I realized how design would influence what I would buy and what I would wear. My dad, a truck driver from Brooklyn who attended Woodstock would take me to the mall in the eighth grade to buy mustard-colored pants, a braided belt, and a polka dot rayon shirt inspired by MC Hammer videos on MTV. <laughs> Realizing that design is a powerful tool that connects people to people through visual ideas eventually led me to become a graphic designer. And today I focus on 3D illustration, animation, and game design programming. I've also had a chance to share this passion as a teacher at a Salt Lake City youth media organization called SpyHop. As a designer, I've had a chance to work on various freelance projects, and two of these projects changed my perspective on design completely. One of them was creating a 3D animation of the LASIK eye surgery procedure, and the other, programming and animating a prototype of a hearing app that shows how the cochlea processes sounds. And through these projects, I've realized something so amazing. We can use the power of design to help people learn science. And that made me think, when we cut funding to our arts programs, are we cutting a valuable tool for doctors, scientists, and educators from telling the visual story of science? Physicist Isidore Isaac Rabi says, as yet, if a man has no feeling for art, he's considered narrow-minded. If he has no feeling for science, this is quite normal. This is a fundamental weakness. I became so excited about this idea of using design to help people learn science, I decided to return to school and find a way to study these subjects together. But I didn't have much luck. And even though there's a handful of programs across the country, none of them were accessible to me. And the more I looked into it, 
and spoke with other people about it, the more I started to think that there's a little bit of an awkwardness between these two subjects. And in my mind, that's when I started to think that art and science are like two singles hanging out at a dance, standing awkwardly in, by the punch bowl in the gymnasium, not knowing what to say to each other, even though they're a really good match. Well, I eventually found out you could create a custom major at Westminster College in Salt Lake City, Utah. So I created the custom major, Biomedical Communication and Design. And I started about a year ago. And I was so excited and ready to learn about anatomy and physiology. And I was falling behind quickly, and I realized that learning science is really hard. <laughs> I found watching online science animations was the one thing that was helping me grasp the concepts. But a lot of times with science, I was trying to learn one simple concept. And learning one concept this way was starting to feel a little bit clunky. And I'm tempted to say old school. I mean, you have to open your browser, search online for videos. Once you find the video, scrub past the intro, find the one concept that you're trying to learn, and then rewind to that part over and over again until you grasp the concept. And what if there's a better way? I mean, what if we could just look at a science concept and see an animation? Or better yet, a hologram using augmented reality. Augmented reality places the digital world into the real world. What if we took this concept and started to create short and concise, Twitter-style, 3D animations that loop over and over again as you grasp the concept? One method of using augmented reality is to have a picture that's associated with some kind of 3D model or an animation. And when you look at that picture, with an app on your phone or some augmented reality glasses, it loads up that animation. So I started experimenting with this idea. I first placed a science concept onto a piece of paper. This could be a worksheet that a teacher hands out, or maybe something you get at the doctor's office. And you could begin to interact with these holograms using touchscreen technology. And then I started to think. What if we could take this same concept and save paper and use a digital format that a lot of people already use? Maybe Instagram or Twitter as a way of organizing and updating pictures. You could have an entire Instagram account dedicated to the cardiovascular system or the nervous system. I think these concepts could be much more effective looking through glasses instead of a tablet or a phone. And as companies like Apple seem to be moving closer to creating some kind of consumer-ready augmented reality glasses, as a design teacher, I can't wait until we can go from sitting in a classroom like this to collaborating more like this. Recently, I had a chance to borrow something called a HoloLens, which is basically some fancy augmented reality glasses. Now, I wouldn't suggest wearing these and asking someone to the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. However, if they say yes, you found your soulmate. Run to the altar before you take it off. <laughs> so I started thinking, how else can we use this technology to experience science and create deeper understanding and accelerated learning? So I started experimenting with some ideas. I recorded what I was seeing through the lens while someone else was recording me. I was so exciting just to see a hologram floating in my living room. Right away, it was exciting just exploring the digital elements that now existed in the natural environment. And I started experimenting with ways of interacting with the objects since my hands were free and placing the objects around the room. I experimented with clicking on buttons and playing animations. I was also able to actually reach out into the air and grab a hologram and pull it closer to me, and program speech recognition to say something like rotate or stop. I also decided to have a little bit of fun with the speech recognition, do something kind of weird. So, yeah. Smith this. Next. 
I also wanted to explore going from macroanatomy to microanatomy in a linear way that makes sense. And since I was having such a good time with these holograms, I decided to take one out to my front yard and see what it looked like in the sunlight. <laughs> these technologies were created using game design software. And as we move into the future, where we interact with the digital world inside of the real world, will we essentially be living, working, and learning inside of a video game? And if so, what could be a future role of game designers? Is it possible they could be working at insurance companies, banks, and maybe even the grocery store? We are at the forefront of an exciting new era of understanding and learning. And as the information age gave us access to unlimited information, I can't help but wonder how we will remember more of that information by experiencing it in the experience age. Now more than ever, the convergence of science and art can help patients, medical students, and our loved ones that are sick understand and relate to science like never before. So let's get these two lovebirds to dance and create a brave new world where doctors and designers high-five in hospital hallways and scientists sing sweet songs grooving with game designers gripping Guitar Hero in order that we can build relationships and work together to tell the powerful and beautiful visual story of science in ways never imagined. Thank you.